Hey everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to another iRacing event race and this time it was a big one, the Nürburgring 24 hours. This video is brought to you by the resources area of my website. Check out info regarding my Discord server, offer setup, pets, sponsors, a monthly blog and more at bruffy.com slash resources. We were in the Toyota, which was a car that I've been racing with fairly regularly as we've seen from the Korea series lately. And I was with my usual team that I'm normally with, the Prolapse team, uh, Josh and Muzz's team that he's actually starting the race as well. And because we were in the Toyotas, which was the slowest class of the uh, entire field, uh, there wasn't as many people racing with them, so we were in a relatively higher split of drivers than we should be. Um, so for the Nürburgring 24 hours, there were five splits of drivers. There's the GT3s, so the fastest, the Porsche 992s, which were second. Uh, the GT4s were the third fastest. The touring cars, the TCRs, were uh, fourth fastest. And then us in the Toyotas were fifth fastest. Even we were in the fourth split of, uh, I think it was like 15 or 16 splits in total for this, uh, but even in the fourth split, there wasn't any touring cars. So uh, yeah, there was just the four classes for our race. But when we when you consider the lap times, the GT3s were doing sort of eight minute lap times, whereas us and the Toyotas were doing 10 minute lap times. So yeah big differences in pace between the very fastest cars and the very slowest car which we were you know choosing to be in and i think it was racing you know the, the team and josh choosing to race the toyota gr86 was probably the only reason that swayed me to actually do the race in the first place because the Nürburgring has kind of, well, certainly for GT Sport, I remember doing a, an event for uh, on the Nürburgring at the very sort of end of it, and it kind of killed the game for me because I had such a terrible time. But going back to, you know, Gran Turismo 4 and Gran Turismo 5, I, I used to enjoy driving the Nürburgring. There are still videos on my channel of Nürburgring sort of events on Gran Turismo 4 and Gran Turismo 5 from sort of 2008, 2011, whenever it might be. I'll link those down in the description if you want to see some old school Bruffy Gran Turismo videos. But yeah, I was a little bit worried that, you know, if I had a terrible time on the Nürburgring, it would ruin the game for me and I would, uh, I would you know, just lose all motivation for eye racing. Uh, that thankfully that doesn't happen. But also fresh in my mind was the last 24 hour race I did at Daytona, um, which obviously if you want to see all the sort of big races I've done, they're all in the events eye racing playlist, which is also linked in the description. Um, but in that one, you know, I went out to we were racing GT3s and I kind of ruined it for everybody because I crashed early on. Well, I hit the sausage curb on Daytona, and I was I felt so bad about that that. I certainly had some reservations coming into this race about, you know, not wanting to ruin it for everybody again, uh, and especially with it being on the Nürburgring, such a difficult circuit to, to to learn. I did put some time in beforehand to make sure I knew what I was doing and, and at least learn the track because it had been a long time since I was on. But yeah, anyway, we like I said, we were in split number four of about 15 splits in total, but. The Toyotas were probably the second least uh, well populated, I think, um, just after the, the touring cars. So there were nine people in our race, 55 people, I think it was, in total in the race overall, uh, but nine Toyotas and we qualified sixth. So Josh was in the car initially, he uh, did the qualifying, qualified sixth, but for a 24 hour race, it doesn't really matter where you qualify. And in those early stages, it was all just about keeping out of trouble. Um, and I think we ended up falling back all the way to, to ninth place. There were a few other Toyotas that were kind of <laughs> making mistakes and, and going for sort of crazy moves that are totally aren't necessary. And we called it even then that these are, these are cars that aren't gonna make it to the end. And they didn't. So um, yeah, there, there were some, dodgy things early on but we were just looking to survive in those early stages and generally throughout the entire race uh, overall uh, we were actually in kind of a bit of a, a streamer split because this was the same split the same race that jimmy broadbent was doing in his gt4 um and some other other you know bigger i racing streamers were in this same split as well but obviously with us being in the toyotas they were all racing other different classes and you know coming around to lap us as, as, as we went on. 
So by the time we got to the end of Josh's first stint, um, stint lengths were around eight or nine laps, sort of an hour and a half-ish uh, for one stint. Uh, there were, there'd been significant crashes for a lot of the other Toyotas, and we were actually in fourth place, which was pretty good, but we were quickly realising that it, it, it's basically a lottery of whether you just get taken out by one of the faster cars or not, because the speed difference is so big, and honestly, sometimes they just didn't care enough. And that seemed to be the case for when we got taken out in the second stint. So Josh was just taking his line and the GT3 car just basically plows straight through us. And, you know, the, the way that obviously the damage is on iRacing, even a small hit into the wall or the barriers or something, especially around the Nürburgring, ring, can cause significant damage. And we ended up being in the pits for 32 minutes with that, which is a good, you know, three laps worth of, of running. Um, so... Yeah, it was actually about on schedule uh, for me to jump in the car. You know, that 32-minute pit time, um, it, it, by the time that was over, I was re you know going to be ready to jump in the car anyway and do my first stint, and I was going to be doing two uh, at the start of the race. So, yeah, we, we'd, we, we were kind of, you know, we'd already had our crash at that point, um, and again, it was we were quickly realising that it was pretty much all just about survival um, and just seeing how far we could get through the race and basically crashing less than all the other Toyotas or at least getting crashed out less than the other Toyotas. So yeah, I didn't know what kind of car I would have when I went out with the, the Toyota for the first time because obviously the, the damage that you fix in the pits, it doesn't necessarily fix everything perfectly. And yeah, it was significantly far down on power. That was the main problem that I was experiencing when I went out. So, you know, all the practicing that I've been doing beforehand, all the sort of lap times that I was figuring out where I, my pace was, none of it really mattered because, you know, I was doing closer to 10 minute lap times in practice. And then with this car, the, you know, the engine was had been damaged. It, it was much slower in terms of top speed on all the big straight you know, areas. We were doing closer to 11 minute lap times. I think I did a 10.45 or something like that. So we were a good 30, 40 seconds per lap slower than we should have been. But that was kind of the same for a lot of the other Toyotas as well. And one of the things that we found as the race went on is that there was issues with the damage model for that was chosen for this race and for the car so that as time went on if you had any kind of damage anywhere on the car it seemed to be making the engine worse and eventually pretty much every single Toyota in the field had engine problems and their engines completely died. Thankfully that didn't happen for me during my first two stints but it did happen to Carl who was our third driver for the stint after me. But before that, for my stints, it was it was pretty clean. I was really happy with how I did. Um, again, the car wasn't very quick, but at least I was keeping it clean. I wasn't uh, getting involved in any incidents. People were overtaking me totally fine. And I was actually making up positions in our class as other people ran into issues. So I think I came out of the pits in fifth place out of the nine Toyotas. And I, I think I got up to a net second place at one point because... Uh, that one of the people in the top two spots was actually on his own so he was never going to make it throughout the entire field uh, throughout the entire race on his own and he also would have been disqualified anyway because you have to have like a minimum of three drivers or something like that so I was hit at one point during my first stint but it was fairly uh, minimal and I was able to keep it on the track so in general it was a pretty much completely clean first stint and, and you know even that small hit there was nothing I could have done about it right side You've got to be kidding me. He wasn't... Chill, I thought chill, I left chill. him loads of space. No. Just chill, 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 rejoin, rejoin, rejoin. To this side, rejoin. How's the steering? How's the steering? Steering is straight. He hit the curb and went wide. He hit the curb and went wide? Oh. Yeah, he yeah, hit the curb and pushed him wide. I thought I left loads of space. Um, amazingly, it seems to drive fine. It doesn't yeah, look fine, but... 
I didn't see any significant changes, even the contact was like zero X here. So I was really happy, especially with Daytona and the failure that I had there being in my mind. Um, and yeah, it, it was it was nice to sort of be making positions as well as other people had issues and I was just driving clean, even if it wasn't very quick because the car just didn't have the pace. Uh, so yeah, we like I said, we got into sort of a net second place um, during my first stint and then in the second stint, I was hit even more. Keep your line. Um. Ah, I couldn't oh. save it. Oh, um. oh, oh, the back is gone. Probably just tow. See what it's like. Oh, there's a meatball. It's a car drivable. I think so. I've got a meatball, so I need to come into the pits, right? It's yeah, crabbing a bit, pit, but pit this lap. it yeah, is drivable. Right, you've got a peacock seven seconds behind you. Yeah. I almost saved it, um, but it, it just it wasn't going to happen. Um, I, I think I hit a little bit of the grass at one point, and that just stopped me being able to uh, fully save it. And again, this was a sort of thing where there was nothing I could do. Basically, that the Porsche just took its line and rammed into the back of me. I think it would the, the fact that he was being pressured from behind as well didn't help. But you know, it, it, this is the the case of when you're in the slowest class and uh, you, you, you're you also dealing with the fact that you are significantly slower than these other cars, like the pace difference is quite insane, even before the damage, you know, the, the loss of time and pace from the damage, it, it, we, we, we essentially, the Toyotas just became punching bags because people didn't seem to want to wait. It did get better as the race went on and towards the end of the race, I think people were you know, settled in their position more and kind of more willing to wait um, for the right opportunity to pass. But really, that's the sort of driving that should have been happening from the very start. And maybe there's sort of a selection bias there that it's only the drivers who actually drove like that from the start that made it to the end. Probably the case. Uh, but yeah, I, I, after I saved it, I was able to get the car back to the pits, which means that I didn't have to tow back to the pits. And, and when you tow, there's a sort of eight to ten minute time that you've got to wait to be towed back to the pits from wherever you are on the track and then you have your you know time in the pits to fix any damage so at least i managed to get it back to the pits so we didn't have that extra time but then there was another 30 minute repair to fix all the damage that had been caused by you know my my uh, incident so it was a shame that that's how my second stint went and it was actually on exactly the same lap of the stint as, as Josh's incident as well, the 12th lap. Um, but, you know, at, at least this time, unlike with Daytona, you know, at least it, it wasn't my fault. There was nothing I could have done in that situation and everyone was experiencing the same thing, especially if you were driving a Toyota. We were still in the race though and with you know all the issues to other people we you know we were still in there and also there were plenty of cars across all the, the field that were you know dropping out or, or having major damage and then ending their race entirely so it, it, it was at this point we realized all just about survival and making it to the end uh, in Carl's stint who was our third driver the engine did die at one point which took a 45 minute pit stop to fix uh, the car was actually better after that in terms of pace, so uh, it wasn't back to its normal uh, power and straight line speed, but it was at least better than what I'd experienced and what Carl was experiencing. Um, uh, so multiple times during the night, our night drivers, they, they got wrecked, as you probably would expect. The engine died again for a second time in the morning while we were in second place, so we ended up losing that and then we went into third place um, and then basically as the morning came and towards the end of the race Josh had hit the second last stint of the race and then it was my time to sort of bring the car home which was quite nice to, to you know to have that responsibility especially considering I felt a lot more comfortable driving the car and and the track at this point it was quite nice to know that I was going to be bringing the car home um, but it was quite an interesting final stint. So Josh had done his and we were in third place. Now we were quite far behind second place in terms of overall time, but we were only about a minute and a half be ahead of fourth place. 
but second, third and fourth were all on the same lap. First place in the Toyotas was gone. They weren't going to be any, you know, they, they, they could almost pull over and, and still win the race. There were multiple laps ahead. But second, third and fourth, which were the only Toyotas that were actually still running in the race at that point, because the, the other five of them had all dropped out completely, uh, we were all on the same lap. So it wasn't, you know, especially with maybe being about two hours to go when I got in the car, there wasn't it, the, beyond the realms of possibility that we could either lose a place or even gain a place, depending on, again, what happened in terms of crashes or things like that. So I had to, you know, be at least somewhat, uh, uh, at least not too slow and, and lose too much time. Um, and the car was in that sort of middle fixed state, so it wasn't back to normal, but because the engine had gone fairly recently, and we had to completely fix it, it was driving much quicker than when I had it in my first stint, which was kind of nice to get again experience the car at least closer to what it should have been. There were also less people on the track in general, there were sort of maybe 30 people in total rather than the 55 that we started the race, so it was a little bit more calm in terms of not getting overtaken all the time by these faster cars. Uh, it obviously was still happening fairly regularly, but not as bad. And like I say, people were generally being a little bit more careful in those situations, uh, you know, because the race is almost to the end. People are gonna take it a bit more time and, and make sure they make it to the end. So yeah, I, I did have one small hit, um, but I managed to save it thankfully, uh, which was I think it was a decent little save, honestly. All right, you got a ton of GT freeze behind you now. Yay! Next one is about to catch you. Well, I hope so. No, he is not. He's not! Jesus Christ. Incredible. Chill, chill, chill. Yeah, you're good. But beyond that, it was a very clean final stint, and I was more focused on position, honestly, and pace. We, Like I said, we came out about a minute and a half ahead of the guys behind us in fourth. I was gradually pulling away, because um, I was starting to set some decent lap times, but then their engine blew, um, so they were completely out of it, so at that point we didn't need to worry about losing third place, uh, and then uh, my pace really, really started to come good, and, and I started to set quicker and quicker lap times, I think I went from like 10 minute 30 to 10.25 to 10.22, and then I even set a 10 minute 18 lap at one point, which was actually the quickest lap time the car had set since the very first stint when it was completely fresh before Josh's first uh, takeout so that filled me with a bit more confidence as well you know and there hadn't even been a sub 10 minute 20 lap time since the very first stint of the race and I managed to set it in this not totally perfect car um, and I was taking sort of 30 to 50 seconds per lap out of the guys in second place in, 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 during the course of my stint. So again, you know, just washing away some of that um, discontent and, and issues that I had from the Daytona race where I made the mistake, and honestly I was just slow and wasn't driving very well, I was actually doing the opposite this time and I was setting some really quick lap times and, the, you know, I'm, I'm not the... Uh, the fact that I got a, a quicker lap time than anybody else apart from the very first stint when the car was fresh doesn't mean that I was the, the quickest guy on the team, far from it, but it was just, you know, one of those things that I, I, I was showing some pace and it was a bit of a confidence booster that I, I was able to do that, you know, in a, in a big race like this. So, yeah, I was catching up a lot to the uh, to the guys in second, but ultimately we ran out of time. I think we needed another, like, hour or something, maybe, um, to, to fully catch them up. Um, I was even quicker than the leader in some of those final laps, but they were, like, 20 laps up the road. So, in the end, we ended up finishing in third place, which, honestly, was pretty nice. That was, you know, that's a podium. We didn't expect that coming into it. Um, in the early stages, when we were in last place in the Toyotas, with... 23 and a half hours still to run you just don't know what's going to happen but hey going into a 24 hour race around the Nürburgring with the slowest class of nine there being nine other people to get a podium 
that's pretty good. And, you know, we, we increased our I rating. Obviously, the safety rating got massively increased. I ended up having um, the most laps done in the race because I, I ended up finishing it and the least amount of incident points. So my, my safety rating, I'm going to, you know, fly up the licenses. Uh, I had, like I said, the, the best lap after that initial crash. And I'm just, I'm really happy with how it went. It was definitely sort of making amends for that Daytona race. Uh, it was nice to be back with the Prolapse team and, and doing a, a big race like this. And yeah, an unexpected podium uh, after being last in the first few laps. It was, it was, you know, a really nice event in the end, even though, you know, the damage issues were a problem and uh, it was a shame that the damage caused such issues. It, it was more about the damage, whether being taken out or, you know, racing's quirks with this race that were more determining the positions rather than outright pace. It was still, you know, we still had to keep it going. We still uh, had to survive and make it to the end. So, yeah, I'll kind of leave you guys to uh, watch it as it happened, as we crossed the line to finish the race uh, after 24 hours. Um, and, and, yeah, I just thank you guys for, for watching. Hopefully it's been an enjoyable one for you. And, and, yeah, you know, I was kind of... I think there's been a reason that it's been so long since I've done one of these between the Daytona race and now and it was obviously because I just wasn't feeling very confident about you know ruining the the race for an entire team after I did that in the Daytona race but um this is this has done the opposite for that and uh, I think it won't be it won't be as long where this happens again so yeah thank you guys for watching I hope you all enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next one um, it does feel good to bring it home like uh one is just doing donuts out of nowhere you said that. 24 hours. Call, yeah. Done. Hooray! Podium. Good job. Third place, yeah. Somehow. Somehow second place didn't crash. Yes. Hooray! Jesus. Right, cool down lap, probably cool down lap. Another lap and that might have been <laughs> a decent little comeback. <laughs> Pretty hectic really? race, that one. Oh, oh dear. Man. We made it. I can't believe we made it after we did the murders. It. Mm hmm all this time. I mean, we could have been P2, but uh, whatever. It's still good, I think. Podium, after all. Yeah, podium. Can't believe a podium. After after what happened in the last 24-hour race at Daytona, that feels good. To have made it to the end. To bring the car home. It, like, cross the line to bring the car home. No significant errors from me. I think I don't think any errors from me. It was literally just getting run into three times. So I'm I'm happy oh, with that. Scumbag. And then setting that one minute, one minute, that ten minute eighteen lap on that final stint, given the car's situation with what it was in, that was a really good lap. So like the pace was there. And to be like 30, 40, 50 seconds quicker than the guys in front of us, to be 50, uh, you know, 10, 15 seconds a lap quicker than the, the leaders at some stages. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm actually happy with how that went. In fact, that, is that the first lap that was sub 1020? Josh, when the car was not broken, set a 10.19 on lap 11 and then I don't think there was a sub 10.20 lap for the rest of the race until my 10.18 at the end in that final stint nice so we got third yeah did I do the most laps wow okay plus 11 I rating <laughs> Plus 2.09 safety rating, straight to 4.99. Holy moly. I had six incident points. That was the least as well. I mean, I had uh, I had a good race, really, in the end. 